and Jazakumullah Khair Rahma Foundation, the MCC, for inviting me. It was unplanned, and I always say this to people, the best plan is what Allah plans. It's not what we plan. This was absolutely unplanned. I think it was three days ago she texted me, says, what, what do you have any day? And I said, the only day I have is Friday night because I'm flying back tomorrow morning. And she said, okay, we want you in Pleasanton. I have no idea where it is Pleasanton. And then I was telling my sister who is, lives in the other side of the Bay Area, and she said, oh, it's an hour and a half drive. And I said, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Allah will reward us. And Jazakumullah khair for all of you coming. Before I start, I want to remind everyone, the brother, may Allah reward him, said a very beautiful statement touched my heart. It's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes something and then bring it back, but bring it back a little bit. Yani I, I have, this is my first time here, but Dr. Arania was saying, and the brother was saying, it's like this place on Friday is jammed, packed. And Allah decided to take it away from us. And this is all our masajid. And we all have to ask this question. Unfortunately, a lot of people are not asking, is why? It's not the COVID. COVID is a, is a, is a sabab, as we say, is a reason. But the main person, the main one who moved the COVID is Allah. He closed his homes, his houses for us, including Mecca. And the question is why? And I always kept asking myself, are we, are Rabbi, not worthy even getting to your home? And you wanted to teach us a lesson. So Alhamdulillah, Rabbil I mean, I always say Allah is Rahim. If Allah was, it was not Rahim, we will not be here. All of us. Whatever good we think we are. But he's Alhamdulillah, Rahim and generous, Kareem. Open the door again, says come back. So how do we come back? That's the question. إِنَّمَا يَعْمُرُ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَأَقَامُ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتَ الزَّكَاةَ وَلَمْ يَخْشَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ The people who flourish the houses of Allah. I just recited to you from Surah At-Tawbah. And Allah is stressing on إِنَّمَا verbally Who flourish the houses of Allah? It's not the people who come because their children have to go to Sunday school or because I have to go to Maghrib. There's nothing wrong with that, but we have to dig deeper. We have to be connected more to Allah, so this will not happen again. Ya'amuru masajid Allah, and Allah said, Ya'amur, flourish. When you build something, say, Aymara, meaning it's a big building. Who are these people? Man amana billah, truth, believe. Wal yawmi al-akhir, and the day of judgment. And then, aqama salah, perform salah, not pray. Did you say your prayer? It's a very common word in the non-Arab uh, culture. It's, it's a word. But it's not say, it's perform. Never Allah in the whole Quran said other than aqam as-salah. Perform salah. You know when you tuqeem, you perform. And then, wa'ata zakah wa lam yakhsha illa Allah. And this is what we're going to be talking, inshaAllah. And you have no fear in your heart. You have no connection. You have no one to please. You have no one to fear but Allah. Are we these people? Maybe we were not. But are we going to be these people. Now he opened it again, but he opened it gradually. You know, when you are, of course, Allah is exalted, but I always give examples for us to feel. You know, when someone hurts you, and then they kept asking for forgiveness, and you were wondering, and then you say, you know what, I'm going to give them a second chance, but you're so, what? You're, you're so careful, and you're worried. Do they really deserve it? And you open the door and you're, you're wondering, let us not be those people with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we come back to the masjid, and I always say this especially to my beautiful sisters, don't use the masjid as it's your home. And same thing for the brothers, but specifically for the sisters, because I see you more. It's when you come to the masjid, immediate word in your heart, hada baytullah, this is the house of Allah, it's not my home. It's not MCC, it's not Islamic Foundation of Greater St. Louis. It's the house of Allah. Whether it's a small or big, you have to have this in you. So, so this flourishing the house of Allah, you start practicing it. So when you see something on the floor, your immediate reaction is not look at Muslims, what they do. Your immediate reaction, you jump and clean it. Because it's the house of Allah. And you cannot be roaming around and talking. and No, it's the house of Allah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at least I say this to myself, number one, if I learn this from COVID, alhamdulillah, COVID was the biggest ni'mah. 
If I learn this and I come back out of this mihna, out of this huge dust, with a gift that they always tell you, fi kulli mihnatin minha, is how they teach you. With every test, there is a gift. If I learn the gift, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. So let's all be grateful. I mean, if we, Allah allows you to pray, Aisha, feel it. That Allah gave it to you again. We stayed one year. No Ramadan, no Taraweeh, no Mecca. And alhamdulillah, he gradually opened it up. So keep this feeling inside you and ask Allah to keep it. Ya Rabbi, I mean. Um, I don't know why I chose this subject, but it's, I think it's the Bay Area. And I really mean it. I think you living in California, and always it's nice to have people coming from outside because they give you a different perspective. Living in California, I was saying this to my beautiful sister, it's not very good for the heart unless your heart is really attached to Allah. I'm going to say, why is that? Number one, the weather. It's a ni'mah. You're so spoiled. If it, I, no, I really mean it. I want you. This is how we are attached to Allah. Everything in my life is a message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As a Sahaba used to say, كُنَّا نَرَى الْقُرْآنَ رَسَائِلْ مِنَ اللَّهِ We used to see the Qur'an messages from Allah. So when the weather is 24-7, is beautiful, my heart, what happens to my heart? أَتَعَوَّدُ النِّعْمَةِ I used to get used to the blessings. I don't feel it. Like for me, when I came and I live in a four-season state and a really harsh four seasons, I was like, Ya Allah, this is amazing. How many of you wake up in the morning and say, Ya Allah, this is amazing? Not the usual. So California has a lot of blessings and has a lot of dunya. It's a lot of dunya in here, way more than other places. So it is, I was worried, you know, I was like, Ya Allah, keep my heart focused on you. And that's why when Rani was, I don't know why I said, let's look at this subject. Are you attached to Allah? And I'm gonna ask this question to everybody. Don't answer me who I am. Answer yourself and then let's go and see what we will learn. If somebody asked you, are you attached to Allah? What will you answer? And if you answered yes, grade yourself. 10 is a Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam and Sayyidina Ibrahim. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us on their little bit footsteps in general. Are you seven? Are you eight? Or are you nine in Ramadan and then you are in the summers five and then during exam when you are you need Allah, you are ten. Are you the person who fluctuate, which most of us are, or not? Are we that person? When I need something? If I have somebody sick, how is my dua? If I have tomorrow an interview, how is my dua? If my child needs something and tomorrow is, how is my connection with Allah? And when I don't need anything, although we always need, but in general. So the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, are we connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And the question is, what is connection? They call it in Arabi, at-ta'alluqu billah. How many here knows Arabi? So I don't use too much words. Ta'alluq is basically attachment. And the best way to learn this, of course, from my profession as an OBGYN, the baby inside the mom, right? They call him the first, one of the first stages called the alaqa. It's in the Quran, actually. Alaqa, you know what it is? It's the, this piece of blood, literally you can't even see it. When it comes, and this is the uterus, comes and attached to it. Attached to it to the point, if it does not attach, what happens? Dies. Miscarriage. Alaqa. It's the same root. I need you to give me your heart and brain. This small clot of piece of blood, if it is not attached well, you get miscarried. You die. That's how I am, should be, me and you, with Allah. Am I? Are we? Like if I am not attached to Allah, I'm dead. I'm dead literally, dead physically, dead emotionally, dead spiritually. Are we, as Muslims? The answer is probably not. I'm not going to say no. I'm going to say probably not. So remember this. At ta'alluq is, they, they say it in beautiful words. I'm just going to try as much as I can. Is attachment when you are attracted to something, 
think of anything or a, or a human being you're, you're attracted to, you love, you are so much in need, you're like poor a beggar, you love for them to pay, give you attention, to text you, to send you special message, and you feel they are separate from everything else. Oh, this is this person. Then you are attached to that person. Is that Allah in my life? I'm going to keep giving you examples of us, and then I'm going to bring you back to Allah. Are we this way with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So the question is, why not? Why we are not? Although when we need Allah, we are there. Why we are not? I need you to answer me. Anybody, from the brothers or from the sisters. Or are we? Let's be very frank. Are we? Are we that baby with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 24-7? Yes or no? We're not, right? Alhamdulillah. The youth are nodding their head. No. Why? That's the question. Why? Are we able? Did Allah create us in a way that we are that baby? Did he create us in that way? That we should be? Did he give us the faculties, as they say, to be attached to him? Yes or no? So we are, yes. Then why we are not? What is the problem? Anyone? Our nafs. Alhamdulillah. What else? Distractions. Alhamdulillah. What else? So we live thinking that everything is under control. Alhamdulillah. What else? I'm looking for one one. This is all true. Shaytan for sure. Anytime you say nafs, add to it shaytan. Because shaytan acts on the nafs. I w ah, you're getting to where I want. We don't know Allah. We don't know who is He. If I want now to ask you, any one of you, anything you know from the Quran, and when you read, and all of you know this, bi'idhnillah, qul huwa Allahu ahad. Who doesn't know this? The first thing we teach our children, right? And by the way, it's one third of the Quran. Innaha thuluthul Quran. But when I say, qul huwa Allahu ahad, Allah is one. What does it mean? What does it mean for me as a person? Does I really mean, does it really mean when I say, Qul huwa Allahu ahad, and I put my finger up, does it really mean in me that I don't see anyone but Allah? I don't see anybody harming me but Allah? I don't see, not harming me, allowing harm to come but Allah? Nobody benefit me but Allah? No one make me speak but Allah? No one, if there was a water here, nobody gave me this water but Allah. When you read Al-Waqi'ah, you all know, bi-idhnillah, I'm sure most of you know, the third page of Surah Al-Waqi'ah, what does Allah says? أَرَأَيْتُمُ الْمَا الَّذِي تَشْرَبُونَ Do you see the water that you drink? أَأَنْتُمْ أَنْزَلْتُمُوهُ مِنَ الْمُزْنِ Did you send it down from the cloud? أَمْ نَحْنُ الْمُنْزِلُونَ Or we send it down. It's a question. No answer. The answer is obvious. And then Allah responds, If we will, We have made it so bitter. Why you are not grateful? How many of you read this verse and then النار, Allah go back again to the nar and zara, to the fire and to the corpse and everything we eat? Why? And there's no answer because honestly there is no answer. التعلق بالله, attachment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never come and I'm saying will never unless you know who is he you really spend your time to know who is he not the two minutes salah Allahu Akbar did you pray? I prayed and I don't even remember what I read when you spend time as you spend time with the most important thing in your life like I always say this to myself and Rania knows this even if there's any physician here in the room how many years we spend studying medicine? Allah only knows how many books we memorized. And training, and training, and still training. You see, M.E., you, if anybody knows what I'm talking about, and in every profession, I ask myself this before anyone. How many years 
let's say days I spent to know Allah. Like when I read the Quran, I, I say, this is his word. Who are you, ya Rabbi? وَعِنْدَهُ مَفَاتِحُ الْغَيْبِ He owns the keys of the unseen. لَا يَعْلَمُهَا إِلَّا هُو No one knows it but him. وَمَا تَسْقُطُوا مِنْ وَرَقَهُ Not a single leaf. This, this verse always makes me even beyond thinking. Not a single leaf, not in California, not in Pleasanton, not in the United States, in this whole world. وَمَا تَسْقُطُوا مِنْ وَرَقَهُ Not a single leaf. إِلَّا يَعْلَمُهَا But he knows it. وَلَا حَبَّةُ Not even a seed. فِي ظُلُمَاتِ الْأَرْضِ In the bottom of the darkness of the earth. وَلَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي السَّمَاءِ Not on earth, not in the heavens. وَلَا رَطْبٍ وَلَا يَابِسْ Not anything moist, not anything dry. إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ Allah said this in Surah Al-An'am. They call it, if you want to know Allah, read Surah Al-An'am. You know, you want to know who is he? Go and read Surah Al-An'am, the cattle. What do I know? What do you know? Whatever degree, degrees I have. If I spend time more and more on learning about Allah daily, not the Quran we read and we don't know what we are reading. When I read and I say, Ya Allah, this is your words, but I don't know what it means. Teach me. I need to know you. Like, you know, when your child says, I want to pass, I want to go to this college, I want to go to Stanford, I want to go to Harvard. You know how you see them? And they have this resolve, and they don't mind studying hours. Where is this with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And I'm talking to adults. You can't do this to your, you can't give this to your children unless you have it. And they see it in you. And they see it in your actions. To get attached to him, I need to know him. That's the first thing. Knowing Allah, they teach you all the time this, and I'm going to make it very easy. You know Allah by three things. Does anyone know? It's very simple. Three things will make you know Allah very well. I'm not going to say go and memorize the Quran. Because if you don't know what's in the Quran, I'm sorry, you don't know who's Allah. What is the three things that you will know Allah by? Three things. They say, Ayatul Maktuba, or Ayatul Maqru'a, Ayatul Mandura, Sifat Asma'hu wa Sifatu. Three things. His words, the verses that is written, the verses that's around us, the scenes, the creation of Allah, and his names and attributes. Names and attributes. I'm not saying memorize the 99, which is amazing, but I'm talking about the real meaning of who is he. Like when you put the, when you are eating and you're looking at the food, looking at the food, it's also in Surah Al-An'am. You know what Allah said? Look at it. Look at it. We don't. We look at beautiful, it tastes good, it's very well designed. But I never say, who is this creator who created this? Unduru, Allah says, look at it. Look at it. The more I do this in my daily life, as much as I look, may Allah forgive me, number one, before anybody, as much as I look at my phone and check all my life is my phone, if I looked at the phone as a creation of Allah, and the words that gets to me is from Allah, and the messages, he made it. The more I reflect on this, I am more and more this baby getting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I hope I'm making it easier for you. Practical, not something uh, uh, from the other world. Spend time, especially you living in California, because you have beauty around you. Beauty in the weather, beauty in the creation of Allah. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful state. Subhanallah. It's the time you spend in the car driving, which is one of the landmarks of California. Use it to reflect. Subhanallah, today I specifically wanted to drive through 280 because everybody was telling me it's one of the most beautiful highways. And I couldn't believe. I was like, Ya Rabbi, what is this? Subhanak. Especially when you are not traveling to another country that you know it's beautiful. This is your daily thing. And you travel and you say, Ya Allah. 
And then I looked at the mountain and then the verse came to my heart. لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله. If we, if you, if we have sent this Quran on the mountain, I was looking at the mountain. Mountains are scary. لرأيته خاشعا. You'd have seen it so humble and humiliated and متصدعا. Cracked out of the awe of the words of Allah. Look at us, what happens when the Imam is reading. Let alone when we are reading the Quran. I ask myself before anybody, when was the last time you're alone reading the Quran or praying, men and women, and you shed, and you shed tears out of the awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And when was the last time you cried because you didn't get this or you lost this or you miss your child or any of the dunya things? So number one in this attachment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, number one is know him. Number two, the reason why we are so far away from where he wants us to be, and the more he gives us, subhanAllah, the more we are far away. Yani, imagine 10 years ago, yeah, just before the internet came in, not that long. Where were we? And where are we? It's huge, as if it's a different, a different uh, uh, planet. But are we a better human beings? Are we a better creation of Allah? Number one, know him. And if you don't know how to do it, ask him. Allahumma arrifni bik. Make this dua to Allah in your sujood. Ya Allah, make me know you. Show me. I see, but I don't see. I don't see. I see, but I don't see. Make me see you. Who are you? Show me. One, two. Number two problem is we love this life. Hubbud dunya. We love it. Don't tell me I don't care. I don't care about the dunya. You know when we, are, we don't care about the dunya, the test? What is the test? That you really don't care about the dunya. What is the test? Which is hadith of Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam. When you have it or you don't have it, it's exactly the same. You know what I mean? When you have the million dollar home, you live in California, the average home is one million dollar. When you have it, you paid it, it's all in your name, and then next day you lose it, nothing happens. Then you don't care about dunya. But, but statements and, and, and titles is very easy to say. And Rasul in a beautiful hadith, where he made one of his prophecies. He said what will happen to us in the future. The meaning of, he said, nations will attack you. Nations will attack you. Think of us Muslims these days. Nations will attack you. The same way when there is so many hands on coming to one plate. The sunnah, actually, is not an open buffet. The sunnah is one big plate and everybody eats from it. That's how they ate. That's the barakah in it. So he was giving him, he was giving them, alayhi salatu wasalam, example from reality. Nations will attack you, just like you, all your hands in one plate. And the sahaba said, because we were going to be few in numbers, we're few. That's how they thought. And what was his response? No. Bal kathir. You will be plenty. What is the number of the Muslims here? One point? I think three or four now. Billion. B, not M. But this is what he said. And think of us Muslims these days. Whether Muslims in the West, whether Muslims in the East, whether Muslims in the world. You are like the foam. The foam of the ocean or of the sea. You see it's huge, and then when it comes to the shore, and they said, why? Now comes to it. Why? And he said, Asabakum al you became weak. And why is that? Because you love dunya, and you hate death. Question for everybody. How many of you think daily of death? And think of yourself or myself, and we're all going to be having this moment. 
getting into that grave. And this one by one there. If we think of it this way, we are not going to be so attached to this that we are leaving. Number two reason, we are so focused on this life. Look at to-do list. Everybody these days has to-do list, young or old, right? We need to be organized. Alhamdulillah, it's a very good way of being organized. But where is in your list, I always say this to myself, where is Allah in the list? You look at number one, I have to go drop the kids, go to work, um, do this, get grocery, invite this person, call that person, visit this. This is all halal, alhamdulillah. Where is Allah in this? What number, if may Allah forgive me before anybody, if even he, ha he is on the list. If he is on the list, I had a friend who used to, it's amazing how people use technology to get them close to Allah. She used to send herself messages every morning. Every morning, you know, notification? And the notification says, please don't disobey Allah today. We are so attached, focus on this dunya. This needs to change. This needs to change in the morning, in the evening, in the afternoon. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forcefully move us to get disconnected and we don't like it. What I'm talking about. He forcefully disconnect us and we don't like it what am i talking about Nam? no no yes salah five times a day he strip us from dunya because once you say allahu akbar what happens everything around you becomes haram you know that as salatu that's what they teach you in fiqh. That once you say Allahu Akbar, everything outside becomes haram. Why don't you answer your phone inside salah? If your child starts crying, why you don't respond? Because everything outside salah becomes haram. Once you say Assalamu Alaikum, everything becomes halal. Every day, five times a day, he forces us and he rewards us for it. See how generous he is. He forced us, come on, ya hifa, come on, leave it. Leave the work, leave the house, leave this, the rat race. Come to me. Come to me for five minutes. And look what we do. What we do. Delay it, or two minutes, or another minute. Or let me finish this, or let me finish that. Then you know where is Allah. Hubbud dunya. So you're telling me, or you're teaching us, we don't need to love dunya? No. The answer is what he taught us, alayhi salatu wasalam. Allahumma ja'al dunya fi qulub, fi aydina, wa la taj'al dunya fi qulubina. Ya Allah, give me dunya, make it in my heart. But don't make it in my, I'm sorry, make it in my hand, but don't make it in my heart. If it is there, alhamdulillah. And if it is not there, alhamdulillah. That's number two. Number one, learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask him to teach you who is he. And the best way to learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is learn his words. Spend time to understand. And if you really want to know Allah, there's like three surahs in the Quran. All the Quran is about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Specifically, one of them is number one, Surah Al-An'am. And I remember when I was memorizing, the teacher used to say, as much tawheed you have in your heart, as much you glorify Allah in your heart, memorizing the surah will be easy. And I never got this together. And it's so true because it's one of the most challenging surahs to memorize. But the more you know Allah, he makes it easy. That's one definitely for sure. The other one is Surah Al-Hashr, the last page, which you all know. And who Allah says, who is he? هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام مؤمن مهيمن you all know this know him when you read this what does it mean Allah السلام what does it mean Allah المهيمن learn 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 I can't focus more on this brothers and sisters I I focus more on the sisters because our institute teach sisters but it's the same thing for the brothers the house has to have both the mother and the father their focus is to know about Allah. Children, this becomes norm, natural. At-ta'alluqu billah. Two. So number one, know about Allah. Number two, lower this dunya. Lower this dunya. Think of the grave. 
Anytime you want something, think of the grave. You know when you go shopping? I wanted, I needed, young and old. I have to have this. You know how we say it? I really need it. Think of the grave. And what are you taking with you? Two. Three. The easiest way, and I'm going to ask you this question. When you love someone, what is the sign you love someone? You love somebody. What is the sign? Or somebody say, I love you. I love you, Dad. I love you, Mom. What is the sign? I'm sorry? I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Can somebody say it? I can't hear it. Sacrifice. Yes and no. There is more. More. Allahu Akbar. So let's listen to the other. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah. You said it. If you love someone, if you love someone, you do what? Jazakallah. If you love someone, you obey them. Your child, I always say this example, mothers and fathers, your child look at you and says, Daddy, I love you. You know, 10-year-old. Daddy, I love you. And then you said, okay, son, go and get the mail. Right? He doesn't. Slag. Then you look at him and says, you love me. I just asked you to go and get the mail. Mothers, you say, make your bed. Mommy, I love you and hug you and everything. Go and make your bed. He doesn't. He says, how can? Three. You know what I'm getting to. The famous poet, a poem, some of you may know it very well. تعصب إلها وأنت تظهر حبه هذا محال في القياس بديع لو كنت صادقا في حبك لأطعته إن المحب لمن يحب مطيع They say this probably Rabi'ah who said this about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me translate and reflect on you. تعصب إلها You disobey him, the Lord. وأنت تظهر حبه and you claim that you love him. هذا محال This is impossible. In logic, that doesn't make sense. If you were truthful in your love, you will obey him. The person who loves obeys the one who he loves. I think this is very clear. I think this is the be most beautiful statement. Every time I hear it, I was like, this came from a heart who loves. Because she was legendary in her love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Legendary. If you read about her, it's like, what is this? Subhanallah. If I love you, I obey you whether I like it or I don't like it. If I love Allah, I will obey him. That's the sign. When I am attached to Allah, because I love him, not because I'm afraid, by the way. You don't get attached to somebody because you're afraid of him. No. The moment that person disappears, you don't. But you don't miss them. You say, alhamdulillah, they're gone. But when you love someone, you're attached to them with, with love and passion, you miss them. You love Allah, you obey him. And if you disobey him, what happens? Another sign of love. When you disobey, and we all disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one is perfect. كُلُّ بْنُ آدَمْ خطا, As the Rasul said. All the children of Adam make mistakes. Sinners, actually. وَخَيْرُ الْخَطَّائِنَ التَّوَابُونَ And the best among those who are sinners are those who repent. So we all, nobody is perfect. Alhamdulillah. We're not angels. What is the sign that you love Allah although you disobeyed him? What is the sign? Say that, don't, be, don't be scared. But say it in a, in, a, in a reality, in a real world, in a real feeling. Huh? Exactly. So Tawbah is absolutely true. Tawbah is the title. But what I'm going to feel, I feel I'm uncomfortable. I feel sad. Why did I do that? How many times I have to remind myself? And if you, the more you love him, the more you're in pain. The sign of Tawbah is actually pain. You're in pain with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why did I do this to you? Attached to him. 
know him, know what is this dunya, and love him by obeying him. In the beginning, like your child, you discipline your child. You discipline yourself. You discipline your nafs. The nafs, you need to discipline it. I love coffee, you're fasting. I, I love sleep, you're getting up at 4 o'clock. The more you do this, it becomes a habit. And you get attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember these. Wallahi, it is not hard. You may say, what is she saying? Where are we these days? But just start first step. And remember, the one you want to get attached to is not you and me. He's waiting for you and me. You know the famous hadith? The famous hadith, the meaning of when, when my servant comes to me walking, I come to him running. What does that mean? How does Allah come to me running? Subhanah. How does he come to me running? You want to wake up for Fajr. You're struggling. And he sees you. Sincerely struggling. Sincerely feel bad when you don't wake up. And see what wonders is going to happen. How somebody will text you just before Fajr. And you look at the text and say, oh, it's Fajr time, let's get up. In the beginning, it's this way. And it becomes a habit. Things becomes, you know the barakah I was telling you about, the sisters before we start? This is part of the barakah. When things start happening in your life, and you don't know what, but, but Allah knows you want to get close to him. But you have to have this relationship. You have to have the desire. That's what Allah wants from me and you. He wants to see that you want him. He wants to see, I really want him, but I'm weak, I can't, I fail. And he said, don't worry, I'll bring you. Put this desire in you. Know him, know what is this dunya. And I, as I'm talking about dunya and death, there is one thing certain in this life. Only one thing certain in this life. Do you know what is it? Death. death. And Allah called it certain in the Quran. Allah called it death certainty. وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ Last verse in Surah Al-Hijr. And worship your Lord till yaqeen comes. What is yaqeen? Certainty. But that's not the meaning in this verse. Till death comes to you. Death is certainty. Think of it every single day. Every single day. The beautiful sister who I didn't even have time to hug her, she had to leave because suddenly had a death. Young, I'm, I'm assuming. It's every single day. Think of that. Three. Obey him step by step. Step by step. Start small, and then it becomes big. Ta'alluq. Sign, the sign, and this is a very nice Ibn al-Jawzi, the Imam Ibn al-Jawzi, he said, I had a problem, and I couldn't solve it. And I thought there is no way out in it. And if you don't know who's Ibn al-Jawzi, a saint, if you read his, his books, if anything, you start crying. He's a book called Bahru al dumu You can't even read it because the moment you open the page, you start crying. It's the sea of ocean. So he was saying, I had this problem. I can't solve this issue happened to me and I can't solve it. And then he said, فَأُرِضَلِي Look at this. He said, then the verse from the Quran came to me. Look at this. What, what verse do you think? It's a very famous verse in Surah Al-Talaq. Yes, whomsoever have taqwa of Allah, Allah will have an exit for him. I'm translating literal. Every time you see the sign exit, I'm looking here to look for the sign. Immediately this ayah come to me. Exit. And he said, oh. So that's what I need to do to find the solution. I need to have Allah in my life. What is taqwa? Allah is in your life. You're afraid, you love, you want to obey, you, you think of him all the time. You want your problems to be solved. We all have a lot of problems. And they are getting worse than before. Have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You, don't, don't tell people, ittaqillah. I, before I say this to anybody, I say it to myself. Ittaqillah. As an Imam al-Junaid, this is an amazing story. He was Imam of the Haram. Haram. And you know when the Imam stand after Iqama, 
and he is say stow, you know this, you hear it all the time, stow, stand up, you know, make your lines. So he said to himself, look where their hearts were. He talked to himself, said, you ask people to stay straight and your heart is not straight. And he didn't want to be an imam. So before you tell people, attaqillah, have fear of Allah, say to yourself, the more I know him, the more he's in my life, I am more muttaqi. I don't have to be reminded. I know he's looking at me. I know he's not happy with me. Or I know he is happy with me. May yajallahu You have Allah in your heart. You have him with you, with you. Wallah ladhi allahu. Any decision you make, and I, I'm, I said his name, any decision you make before you ask anybody, and before you make any decision, it's not because you love it. It's not because you like it. It's not because everybody else is doing it. It's one question, one answer. Pleasing to Allah, and he wants me to do it. وَتَوَكَّلِ عَلَى اللَّهِ And do it, and see what he will give you. It needs work. It's not easy, but it's not impossible. He will never ask us for anything that we cannot do. لَا يُكَلِّفُ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا you all know this ayah. Allah will never ask us to do anything we cannot do. That's why a lot of people misunderstood this verse. Anytime you're in difficulty, you say to yourself, I know I can handle it because he put me in it. He didn't put somebody else. He asked me. He wants me to be close to him. He wants me to be, to, to be in his presence all the time. Ya ayyuhaladheena haqqa tuqatih. Have the taqwa of Allah, the real one. That means I can. I just have to work on it. And I need to change, as I say this to myself, change the gear, change the focus. And, and as I was listening this morning, as I was driving, hasn't time come and that their hearts surrender to Allah? And I said to myself, when is the time going to come? When is the time? When? I was like, tomorrow? In a year, when? COVID, and we didn't change, I didn't change. When we will change? Allah said this in Surah Al-Hadid. Isn't time has come yet? And and the answer you should always answer, Bala Ya Rabbi, time has come. Ask him. I don't want to take too much of your time, alhamdulillah. I want to leave some time for questions and answers. But this is what I want to leave with you in this beautiful, blessed place, this beautiful, blessed day. Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi. You know we came to you wanting, I can see it in all your faces. You really want to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody will say no. But because it's a difficult road, we find excuses. Tell him, Ya Rabbi, I want. Ya Allah, make it easy, and he will make it easy. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika, ashadu an la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk, sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa ashabi tasliman kathira. Jazakumullahu khayran. Yes, please, any question, any comment, both brothers and sisters. Too quiet community, I don't know what does that mean. I'll tell you one thing in medicine, you probably Rania knows this. Anybody, anytime they were teaching us something where there's no questions, he used to say, there's two possibilities. Either you understood everything or you understood nothing. So I'm hoping the first one. <laughs> yeah, oh, I think our hearts are in awe, inshallah. Ya Rabbi Ameen. Ya Allah Ameen. Turned on. Ya Rabbi Ameen. From the youth, anybody. I love the youth when they say things. Where is Amina? I don't see her. Yes, Amina. Amina, I want you to share with everybody what you, is, is it okay if I say it? Do you allow me to say it? So Amina is nine years of age, and then I, 10, I'm sorry, please forgive me, 10 years, and I didn't say it, her older sister said she put her hijab by herself. May Allah, pray for her, Allah keep her strong. I really mean it, everybody. And then I said, what made you do it? You answer now. For the sake of Allah, uh, because there's one hadith, um, That's the answer I got, 10 years of age. Because to please Allah, and 
So then the question I asked, because we all, any woman who wore hijab know these questions. What do you do when people ask you questions? Why you are doing it? What is the name of this thing on your head? Why, right? So what did you do in your school? I made a presentation so I don't have to answer it over and over again. <laughs> I am speechless. I made a presentation in the school and anybody ask a question, go back to the presentation. <laughs> I'm not going to answer twice, right? MashaAllah, tabarakallah. May Allah bless you and bless your parents. Ya Rabbi Ameen. And your siblings. And may Allah keep you strong and make you ala amina. If you know who is, I'm sure she knows who is amina. MashaAllah. So look at this. Why I am not as strong as she is? All of you, brothers and sisters, why I am so shy to pray in public? You pray in public? You pray in the airport? And I was like, why not? Why not? What is, what is the problem? Why not? Private place, keep looking for a private place, you'll find it. Yeah, but everybody is looking at me. I was like, oh, people always look at you anyway. This is what we need, you know? Because that's what he told me to do, I'll do it. Then you are attached to him. And the more you do one difficult thing, you see how more you are attached. Alhamdulillah. Any comment from the brothers? Yes, sister, please. Rania, in front of you. Assalamualaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Sister, I actually have two questions. Yes. The first one is, I work in a school. Yes. So every time, whenever there is time to pray, the thing is, the staff room is usually, everyone's wearing slip shoes. Men, women, walking around. So for me, I feel very uncomfortable to just put the janamas. I don't mind praying in public, alhamdulillah. But, you know, if I have to pray inside a room, it's so difficult. Is it okay to pray inside a room? Okay. So let me take this question because that's a very practical daily issue. So alhamdulillah, she has no problem praying in public. But she doesn't feel comfortable praying in the break room. This is how I'm going to straight answer. This is how shaitan comes to us. There's a beautiful book. book called Ighatatul Lafam in Masaid al-Shaytan. It's an Imam ibn al-Qayyim, two volume. How Shaytan has his tricks for every individual. So the sister, may Allah bless her, she has no problem praying in public. So the Shaytan says, I'm not gonna come and tell her everybody is looking at you because it's not gonna work. But it works on other people. So what is the, what is the trick? The place is not clean. What is the answer? It's from Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam. وَجُعِلَتْ لِيَ الْأَرْضُ طَهُورًا الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام said the earth was made for me as pure the only place we cannot pray fiqhan is in the bathroom or if there is a najasa even if there is a najasa you know the famous hadith of the Bedouin who came to the masjid please forgive me and urinated absolutely you pray you put your jainamas you don't want your prayer anything but don't you ever compromise your salah because that's one of the ways i hear it a lot from sisters i can do uh, wudu in the bathroom that's the other thing i don't have my hijab i don't have my socks all these i keep telling them this is how shaitan comes to you i don't know about the i had actually a long discussion one time with a brother he said i just feel very uncomfortable doing wudu in public i was like why why learn how to do the wudu of rasul with one cup you don't have to do a flood zone as I, we always see it, unfortunately. Unfortunately, right? In our masajid. Learn, he used to do one cup. Do only the arkan. Don't do the sunnah. If it means that I'm going to do the arkan, but I'm going to keep my salah, do it. Absolutely. I'll tell you one thing. I, there is, you know, when you have children, you raise children, I'm sure all of you, you have these things in home. You say, this is non-negotiable, right? There's red lines. You all have it. This is what you say to yourself. I'm going to share this with you, everybody, just to give you an, an idea. And I'm not praising myself, a'udhu billah. I just left my private practice two weeks ago because we're going to be teaching full time, as some of you know. So the, the staff made a, you know, farewell party. Okay, alhamdulillah, rabbalan. I'm the only Muslim in the practice. And we have totally about 25. I'm talking about Midwest. I'm not talking about California. Everybody is either white, 
or uh, no other uh, white or black. And nobody is a Muslim. They've never seen a Muslim. I got two gifts. I couldn't believe it. I mean, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Alhamdulillah, I got a lot of gifts. One gift, I actually took a picture and shared with everybody. This is where I want to put on every social media. Because that's what you want to show people. And this is from a nurse who has worked with me probably two or three months. And most of my patients are also Muslim. It's basically something you put on your, on your desk. It's, it's like a glass. And she put in it, she made it herself. In it, like a wire that has lights. So far, so good. What's written on that glass? In Arabic. Alhamdulillah. When I opened it up, and I was like, what made you think of it? And she said, because I hear it from you and from your patients. And I said, where did you find it? Dr. Yunus Google. That's how she said it. <laughs> Wallahi. And the second gift I got, I couldn't believe this one. And this is actually the, the sajada I carry with me. And this is from the manager. Sajada, bead, blue, and uh, um, like a book marker that has Islamic. We, and I, you know what, when people ask me about Islamophobia, you know my answer? We have Islamophobia. It's not them. We are scared. We are scared to say we are Muslims. Why? Why? What is the big deal? What is the big deal? As I always remember this, the statement of Sayyidina Umar, Alasna ala haqq. He used to tell Rasul Alayhi aren't we on the truth? I'm not going to be bragging about Islam in front of non-Muslim. I'm saying this to myself. Why I'm shy to say I'm a Muslim? Why you wear your hijab? Because that's how Allah told me. Why do you dress like this? This is my Islamic identity. What is the big deal? Why all the people who are not on the truth disobey Allah everywhere you find them? And they're not shy to say it. Why we are? And that's part of, the more you do this, the more you are connected. I think you had another question. Then tell me when I have to stop, please. Yeah. Okay, I used to wear the hijab all the time. Alhamdulillah. Now, alhamdulillah, but the thing is, I work in a high school, I don't wear it anymore. And Why? That is every single day, at the end of the day, when I'm driving back home, it kind of gets to me. As you said, it's just that, I don't know, I'm so overwhelmed trying to wear it. And I hate myself for that, frankly speaking. I always question myself, like, why am I not wearing it? Is it because of the other people I'm working with? Or is it just the environment? Where am I stuck? Quit your job. And I mean it. If my job is going to take me from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it doesn't worth it. As I always say this to myself, don't sell your akhirah for your dunya. It's a lost stock market. Quit if you cannot be you, who you are, who you want to be, who you are actually. In work, at work, quit the job. You have awe of Allah, he will give you not a job in high school, he will give you even better. One option. Or you go tomorrow and wear it on Monday. Before you leave, Ya Qawi Qawini. You are the strong, keep me strong. No other options. There is no tomorrow I will do it. Because tomorrow shaitan is going to come to you. Doesn't worth it, ladies and gentlemen, and brothers and sisters. Doesn't worth it. Wallah ladhi la ilaha illahu. You know, there's this beautiful statement. I don't know who said it. And he said, Al Aqil, the wise person. Man taraka dunya qabla an tatruka. Who leaves dunya before dunya leaves him or her. Wa ammara qablahu qabla an yadkhulah. And flourish and build his or her grave, not homes, before he or she enters. And look at the last one. Wa arda mawlah qabla an yalqah. And he pleased his Lord before he or she meets him. Put these three in you before you go to school. When you, are, when you are getting dressed, get ready. Put these three and see if you're not going to do the hijab. And I ask everybody in this room, including my, myself, please make a dua for you. Because you don't know whose dua will be responded. 
who Allah will accept. And if she gets strong, Allah knows how many people who have the same issue. They will see you, they will follow you. You know, it's a domino effect. The negative is domino effect, but the positive is also domino effect. May Allah keep you strong. Allahumma inni as'aluka thabat. That's a dua I always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, keep me straight, steadfast. Steadfast on your path. Ya Rabbi, Amin. Jazakum Allah khair. I think it's Aisha time. I don't know. Nobody is saying anything. And I am the guest, so I can't comment. 9.50. Maybe one of the brothers has a question. Are you holding a mic? Any of the youth? Yes. Any of the young? Yes, please, brother. Have you been in Hajj? No, I haven't. May Allah invite you. Inshallah. Have you been in Mecca in Ramadan? No. May Allah invite you. Inshallah. Amen. In Haram in Taraweeh. Not now. Before they expanded. When it was jammed, packed. And Alhamdulillah, Allah blessed me, I was there. When I am not exaggerating. When you go for Ruku' you are Ruku' on the person in front of you. That's especially the last 10 days. If you lose your wudu and you want to go out, make your wudu and come back, Taraweeh is done. You learn how to do it. One cup, and you, you bring with you another, if you are in the haram, or if you are just a cup and a bag. Usually in the haram, we put a bag, so the carpet, right? And then what you do, literally, the cup, you wash your hand. If you don't, if you're not used to, I do all the sunan with one cup. You do once, the, the, the rukun, the obligation. And then pour your mouth, and then you spit in the other. Your nose, the same thing. And you just don't pour. Get in it. What is it? Igsilu. The ayah, the verse tells you, Ya ladina amanu, idha qumtum ila salah, faqsilu. Or you believe, when you get up for salah, wash. So the ulama, scholars, so what is this wash? Wash means, it doesn't have to be flood zone and everything is wet. Wash is that the, whatever part you are is wet. Is wet that if you hold it, drop comes out. So you cannot just wipe. You need to wash. But a little bit of water will wash it. For the feet, that's when you need your socks. Because you just wipe on your socks. And I've done it, I can't tell you how many times. Especially when you're traveling. It really comes very handy. I mean, the only place I can do it is in the plane. If I, if, I mean, It's tough when I'm sitting. But in general, I've done it everywhere. And if I have a bottle, that's even uh, that's a generosity. That's extra. I can do like two wudu in it. Practice it and you will do it. It's very, very easy. And sometimes even not the whole full cup. Bi'idnillah. Wa iyyakum. Yes, don't be scared. Don't be scared at all. You never know. One question will, will teach. I can't tell you how many questions I learned before anybody else. Bismillah. And you have to tell us your name also. Um, my name is Manahil. Your name? Manahil. Maha? Ma Manahil. Tayyip. Um, and uh, I was wondering, like, from an Islamic perspective, what are we supposed to do if there's, like, a person in some sort of authority who makes you feel uncomfortable, in a sense? So, person of authority? Yeah. Muslim or non-Muslim? Non-Muslim. Non-Muslim. And makes you uncomfortable because? Um, I'd rather not say, please. Okay, uh, I, I, that's why I was asking, because there's more than th this. In general, I mean, this is, this is probably a private question, but in general, let's take it in general, and then we will we'll come to this specific later on. If anybody around me makes me uncomfortable, right? And this is very common, yes? If she doesn't want to talk about it, I think we need to respect her. Yeah, absolutely. But in general, we all go through this. Anybody who works knows this, right? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanna test you, will send you a boss that will make your life miserable. She or he, right? So this is an uncomfortable, I am in a situation, make fun of me, make fun of my hijab, make fun of my accent, you name it, we go through it. Number one, I'll say back to our lecture. Remember, there is a, Allah, who is stronger than this person, who can remove this person in a minute, who can literally destroy this person in a minute. 
Don't you ever fear any human being. Look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and says, Ya Rabbi, make me way out of this. Get me out of this. Whether he will move you to another department or another school or they move him or her. Number one, I, you know, every question you ask me, I come back to number one is a dua. And number two, nobody can harm you unless Allah allows it. What did he teach? Alayhi salatu wasalam. Sayyidina Mu'ad, he was your age. You know the famous hadith, Ya Ghulam, inni yu'allimuka kalimat. Young boy, I'm teaching you words. Right? So Sayyidina Mu'ad, the scholar says he was 12 or 13, this age. What did he teach him? Long hadith, it's an an-nawawi, but لو اجتمعت الأمة, the whole nation, get together to harm you, no one will harm you unless Allah allows it. This is what I want to tell you. Have this, the more people see you're strong, strong meaning you're a Muslim attacked, attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Subhanallah, they get scared from you. Wallah ladhi allahum. Meanwhile, mom, if you can change it without going to the details, don't brush this feeling. Now specifically about the youth. Don't brush the feeling of the youth. Rania and, and Husay, you know this very well. If she tells you, I am scared, that means there's a reason. Even if you think this reason is not relevant in my eyes, but I am much more older, I've went through this, done that, been there. But for her, I need to help her. But let her do it, either change it, but number one, both of you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But don't be afraid, this is what I'm gonna say generic. Don't be afraid from anyone, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's al qawi he will protect you, always, always. Yes. There's a sister in the back. I hope I answered your question. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. If we have a hard time forgiving ourselves for our mistakes or we struggle with feelings of uh, guilt and just feeling unworthy of Allah's love, um, how do you suggest we, we overcome those feelings, especially if sometimes they, uh, they dis they, it feels discouraging? Uh, Very good question. Did you all hear the question? So this is exactly the opposite. So I feel I am I'm a sinner. I did not obey Allah. I'm worthless, right? That's exactly one of the tricks of shaitan. That's another trick of shaitan, how he comes. Every one of us has his weakness point. So shaitan knows where is the weakness. I tell you what, when, when I see I'm worthless because I am a sinner, how do I say to myself? That doesn't mean it's okay, no. But remember what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. The most merciful verse in the Quran, some of you may know it. That's how we buy the, almost all the scholars of Quran agrees. The most merciful Ayah in the Quran. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ Say my servant. And Allah says, يَا عِبَادِيَ He even put the ya. That's, there's a lot of talk about even this letter. الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ They have transgressed against themselves. What did they do? أَسْرَفُوا Israf meaning you went way above the limit. What did they do? Doesn't matter. And what did Allah says? لَا تَقْنَطُوا مَنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ don't despair from the mercy of Allah. And then he put this statement. Subhana, that's not my word. Inna Allah jamia. Verily Allah forgive all the sins. Even the, even the scholars, there's a lot of discussion. What about the mushrik then, the kafir? And then there's another verse and, and Nisa responded to this. So this is what you tell yourself. Actually, it's a good news. Look at the positive. You know you are, have done so many, th I'm not saying you, but the person, done so many things that they are not even worthy of this ni'mah. Then immediately I say, Alhamdulillah, Ya Allah, you're showing me my shortcomings. If you didn't want me to repent, you will not show me my, my shortcomings. If you didn't want me to come close to you, you will, ha will have let me be heedless. No, you are a creation of Allah, then he loves you. You are the one say, La ilaha illallah, then he loves you. You are a sinner, 
All of us are sinners. And the best among us, repent. Don't you ever let shaitan paralyze you with this. No. Yes, I made a mistake immediately. As the Rasul taught us, follow every bad deed with a good deed. It will be removed. So don't let shaitan come to you this way at all. There's too many questions from the sister side. Not too many, but usually comes from the sister side. Young, the young people, mashallah, may Allah reward you for coming and attending and staying. Tayyip, okay. Anything else? Anybody? I think we should wrap. I think so, too, yeah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta al-sami'ul alim. Tub alayna innaka anta al-tawabu al-rahim. Rabbana la tuzik qulubana ba'da idh halaytana. Wahab lana min ladunka rahma. Innaka anta al-wahab. A'udhu billahi an dhakra bihi wa ansa. I seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I remind you of him and I forget him myself. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all our good deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all our shortcomings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heals and cure every sick person, every sick person. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy, rahmah on every person who passed away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lift this test from this earth, let alone from the Muslims. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open the masajid and his homes to us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open Mecca, his house, for all of us. May Allah protect us all, protect our children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect this ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who loves him and loves each other for the sake of him. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabi taslima kathira. Jazakumullahu khayran.